given the austerity economics that we as a nation are steeped in, it is critical for labor and community partners to come together to build an alternative narrative, the real narrative of what everyday people are facing today. We need a program of mass education about the economy. This is why I'm excited about the relaunch of the Common Sense Economics. This is our opportunity to develop and push out a message of shared prosperity to both union workers and community members. Hundreds, just imagine hundreds, thousands of common sense economic sessions that bring together union members, community members, students, young people, people of faith, and many others in our communities to discuss and learn about the economy from our perspective. The two people we're talking to next, we used to talk to when they were on the outside of the traditional labor movement. They're on the inside in lots of ways right now. With me is Saket Soni from the National Guest Workers Alliance. Saket, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me, Laura. And Sarita Gupta from Jobs with Justice. May I congratulate you on, is it 25 years, 25. 26 years, 27 <laughs> years? It's a huge celebration. It's a huge milestone, <laughs> 25 years. Take yeah. us back. Let's use that time frame. Take us back 25 years. Where were you? Where were the movements that you represent today in relation to the AFL-CIO? Yeah. Well, Laura, I, I just want to say this is an incredible moment to be here at the convention, um, to really see the broadening and the opening of the space to community partners as well as worker centers. 25 years ago when Jobs of Justice was founded, that was not the labor movement that we were born out of, frankly. Um, it was not a movement that was ready to broaden. Uh, we were fortunate at Jobs of Justice that we had a group of very visionary labor leaders who knew there needed to be a movement uh, for working people, that put people in the streets, that allowed labor to build deep community relationships and um, transform literally the, the lives for, for working people. Now, there were also a lot of people that said, whoa, wait a minute, yep. what are labor resources doing going into any organizing that isn't in the workplace covered by collective bargaining That's agreements? Right. Why are That's our Jews right. going to this community work? Well, so this is why I feel so proud about being here because our network, we have 45 coalitions across the country. We have been building and planting literally the seeds for this moment, um, building the relationships and proving that the potential of what is possible when labor and community come together in really powerful ways and have a shared vision for the kind of economy we need and want, the kind of democracy we need and want, and really a, a fundamental principles of respect, dignity on the job, um, and really living standards that allow people to really support themselves. Saka, you've been on the same journey. I mean, your workers, you represent workers who were brought to this country to do jobs that workers in this country could sometimes be doing, but probably aren't. There's been anxiety about whether your members are friends or foes of union laborers. How have you worked through that? Well, we have a group of members here uh, with us who are uh, Jamaicans who entered Florida on H-2B visas uh, as guest workers. They came to clean luxury condos. Um, they paid $2,000 to come. Uh, they came and they were supplied by a subcontractor to property management companies to clean luxury condos. Um, and their take-home pay every two weeks was $0 after deductions. Uh, they were the lowest paid cleaners in their industry in Florida. And one way to cut it would be that those workers were driving down industry standards, that those workers were undercutting the wages and working conditions of uh, American-born workers. Uh, another way to cut it, and the way that the labor movement in Florida cut it, um, was that these workers are just like every other worker. That's right. And the position they're being put in is creating a race to the bottom. And in Florida, the labor movement stood with these workers. In Tallahassee, the AFL-CIO State Federation president launched our campaign with them. 
in Miami, SCIU and Unite here stood with them. And today, they're here at the convention, um, and uh, Terry O'Sullivan, the president of the laborers' union, signed a pledge card saying, I commit to supporting these workers. You know, so it really is the case that not only can labor and community come together, but in many ways, labor is community, That's and right. community is labor. And what it takes is workers sitting down with workers, building relationships, and then building a vision to transform the economy together. I think in many ways, that's the conversation um, that started uh, so beautifully here at this mm. convention. It's an incredible story. Um, you have a victory story very recently involving Sally May. We have a student debt campaign that's targeting Sally May because, as you know, a lot of working families <clears throat> are really struggling and saddled with enormous debt right now. And young people are graduating with enormous debt. Um, and Sally May has been a really big problem in terms of their, you know, the rates that they charge um, for student uh, loans. And so we've been targeting them, and what we found, we realized they have a relationship to ALEC. Yeah. And so Legislative Exchange, Exchange Council, Council. That that's kind of right. Group for that's right. And so a few months ago, we went to their shareholders meeting with Randy Weingarten, president of the American Federation of Teachers, was right there with us and students from the U.S. Student Association and our Student Labor Project. And together, we walked in there and we said, why are you in ALEC? And we questioned. We questioned a lot of things. Um, but we're super excited that yesterday we, we, we discovered that through all of our pressure tactics, Sally May did in fact pull out of ALEC. And how different would it have been if it had been just the community groups, not Randy, not the teachers? Yeah, it would have been really difficult. I mean, really, Randy, AFT brings the power of that union. It's a huge union, huge membership. And it wasn't just that one action they did with us. They've actually been working with us to develop the strategy around this campaign because they understand that the families they serve Serve as teachers are struggling and that a lot of their members are struggling with student debt as well and so it's been a beautiful coming together and I think that's part of what's been so inspiring about being here is you walk into that convention hall and oh my gosh I mean the power of the labor movement is enormous and if we can be smart about how we leverage and weave together the power of the worker center movement and new sort of initiatives that are moving right now to change our economy um, and weave that together with the existing infrastructures of labor, there's so much that's possible. All right, well, let's talk about some of the things that you want to see realized uh, of the possible. Yeah. Um, what are your goals leaving this convention on the ground? Does uh, yeah. want to start? Our goals leaving the convention yeah. to transform democracy and rebuild the economy. <laughs> right. Is that a that that, that, <laughs> that should be done by Friday? Right? That's it's, on our to do it's, list. It's, it's going to take a year. <laughs> this time, this time next year. Look, I think you know um, the worker center movement in this country has a really exciting set of campaigns and workers in motion across the country. Um, I spoke about the workers in Florida. This group of Jamaican guest workers um, went on strike even after the employer threatened to have immigration police and the sheriff escort them to the airport and deport them mm -hmm. if they came forward with complaints. And yet these Jamaican workers went on strike and ended up really igniting a community labor coalition that won unprecedented um, protections from immigration. Um, guarantees that immigration wouldn't participate in a labor dispute. Across the country, Jobs with Justice and us are building a campaign to push back against exactly that kind of employer retaliation. Um, the domestic workers in a press conference today uh, announced that they may be close to winning a Senate vote on um, the California Bill of Rights for domestic workers. Uh, day laborers, car wash workers, restaurant workers across the country uh, the, the worker center movement you know, is on the move. And I think coming out of this convention, um, our goal would be really to strengthen the partnerships yeah. across worker centers and unions so that we can really drive 
a set of priorities together. Look, we, we are not in this to create new low-wage jobs. If we look at the jobs in this country and make bad jobs better and win control over the economy, um, we can be setting up for the next generation of the labor movement. And that's what we want to do. You talk a lot about economic democracy. One form that that's taking in some people's work lives these days are new structures of work, including worker co-ops, uh, where workers own an interest in the company itself. You two, both of you, recently went on a delegation to the world's largest cooperative network, um, the Mondragon Company in the Basque region of Spain. What was your takeaway from that trip? Uh, I mean, I was just blown away by the layers of the building, but the real intentionality behind what they were building, how were they, they've been building it, and why, all in relationship to their vision for full employment in the region, right? Um, was just inspiring. It comes with a, a worker-owned bank. Exactly. Uh, college. That's right. That's right. That's right. All of, I mean, it's a broad network. And I think, for me, the big takeaway was the need for us in this country to really build this movement for economic democracy. I think we have siloed ourselves as movements for too long. Workers' rights over here, broader economic justice over here, democracy over here. And really what we need is to weave these different movements together in a much more powerful way and with a real, you know, cohesive narrative. Everyday um, people should be able to place themselves in the story of the economy today and understand where they have power to make change and, and really flip the, the narrative that we can in fact have a better life. And so let's, what's our vision for that and how do we get there? Well, thank you both for coming in and talking with us about it. Sarita Gupta thank and Sakit Soni. Thanks for we having us, We will follow Laura. the story closely. Thank, thank you. you.